Hello and welcome back to another Inside EVs video. Welcome here to Belgium. Welcome back to the Volvo C40 Recharge. And in this video, we are gonna go for a drive and sort of my final thoughts, the review, if you will, of the C40 twin engine recharge now that I've spent a couple days with this car. I've been lucky enough to spend a couple days with this car ahead of when it comes to the US. In the US we should see these cars sometime in early quarter one and I don't think there's a limitation as to how many Volvo will sell. I asked them and they said we want to sell as many as we can. Love that, absolutely. The C40 is Volvo's first fully and only electric model. So I shouldn't say fully, they have the XC40 recharge, but in terms of the C40, you will never see a combustion engine in this car. Now I'm gonna do a little plug. I've already taken you on a full tour of this car. It's an over half hour long video, I believe, of just a full in-depth tour, touching every button, going through all the design details. But I'll give you a quick rundown here before we jump on the road and talk about driving dynamics, because that's what we're gonna be focusing on in this video. Again, we have a 78 eight kilowatt hour battery pack gross about 75 kilowatt hour usable two individual 150 kilowatt motors front and rear axle so all wheel drive 300 kilowatts of power about 402 horsepower us 408 brake here in europe overall the car looks amazing in this fjord blue color you can see here these cars rolling in as well looking very nice we're on a little drive here and overall i think this car is awesome it's essentially built on the cma platform which is the same as xc40 recharge and polestar 2. this particular one's more of a styling exercise when compared to a XC40 recharge. You can see this sloping roof line here in the rear. These fins are not functional from an aero perspective. You can see there's nothing here, but they do house the hinges for the rear trunk lid, which I think is really nice. Um, what else should I show you? Well, I'll just take you on a quick tour, show you trunk space really quick. You can see these are no longer badged as P8, like the XC40s. They're now badged as Recharge Twin to indicate the all-wheel drive. I have my suitcase in here. There's a little bit of underfloor storage. You can check out the full tour for this, of course. If you look here inside, one of my favorite touches are the Fjord Blue carpeting. It's made out of PET recycled bottles. I think 78 bottles were used in this particular car. One of the best parts about XC40 and modern Volvos and especially the 40 cluster cars just in general, um, and I should say C40, not XC, is the subwoofer is used to reverberate the chassis, not necessarily in each door, which means you have a much thinner door card needed because you don't have a giant subwoofer, which means you get all this extra space, which is really cool. Heated rear seats, USB-C in the back, animal-free interior. Every electric Volvo going forward, including this one, will be completely animal-free, which I think is amazing. I love this material. It will hold up well over time. It will reject stains. I think that's awesome. In terms of pricing, this car starts at about $57,000 US, $57,500, $58,000 after destination. And you know, it's near as makes no difference with options, 60 grand by the time you put on the color you want, things like this. But the car comes pretty fully spec to our market, which is pretty cool. Uh, glass roof as standard, really, really nicely packaged car for our market, of course. About 215 miles of EPA, sorry, 225 miles of EPA range expected. And I think that's, um, that's really gonna be the hard sell. What's it gonna do in our 70 mile per hour highway range test? That we will have to see because a lot of times the EPA doesn't tell the full story, especially for highway driving. So we'll see how this does on the highway. It has a charging speed peak DC charge rate of 150 kilowatts. It has an AC onboard charger of 11 kilowatts. You can set your maximum charge limit from 40 to 100% in 10% increments got a Harman Kardon sound system. And overall, I think that is the quick gist of the car, the quick tour. What do you say we jump inside, head out on the road and share sort of our, my first impressions and full review. Man, this Fjord blue color is mega and it's unique only to C40. You can also get C40 in sage green, which was the XC40 color. That would look good too. And I think this with a little bit of a ski roof box would be Really cool, really cool. Take a look at the full tour where you can learn about details. For example, I'll link to it in the description, such as why there's these little spacing between the lights, a first for a Volvo. Really cool touches on this car. Let's jump in and go for a drive. 
you join me in the C40 now. We're gonna go for a drive and we'll talk about how the car feels on the road. Not too much dynamic stuff around here. There's no real twisty roads, but again, it's a Volvo. It's not really a performance car. We've already done Polestar 2 Performance, which is a very performance oriented car. So let's go through some driving modes really quick. There's an off-road mode, there's one pedal drive, and a steering feel firm switch. Those are the three settings to adjust uh, your driving experience. Uh, Off-road mode only works below 30-ish kilometers per hour. I'm not sure exactly what it does, but I can imagine it backs off some stability control to get you out of the snow, things like this. One pedal driving, that's pretty self-explanatory. I'll talk about how that works. And then you have steering feel firm, but this is a Volvo. You want a comfortable car, a programmed in our destination. We have a beautiful steering wheel here. Again, completely animal free interior, which I absolutely love. I love all these new materials, recycled plastics, the attention to detail, this giant glass roof is lovely. Everything in here is amazing. I know you're already gonna ask about the glass roof, so let's get this out of the way. How is it in the hot sun? I didn't have a chance to try it, but I've tried the Polestar 2 roof, which I think is a similar unit or maybe same, it gives me the same uh, sort of impression and it was awesome in the sunlight. So foot on the brake, there's no start button to start it as long as the key is in the car. By the way, let me show you the key. It's typical Volvo key, but what's nice is it's, uh, it's not a leather one, but it still has some weight. So when you buy a Polestar, you get this really cheap plastic key. This is also kind of cheap plastic, but it has no weight inside of it. This, they put a little weight so it feels nice. You get these nice chrome buttons on the side. So this is like the one step up key, which is important because um, yeah, the, you can't do the inscription keys here because those are real leather. So I think this was the right approach for Volvo to take. There's a little trash can in the center here. I show you all of this in the tour, but I love that this car has a trash can built in. So to start it, I just pull back on the shifter car turns on, comes to life, we're in drive, it lets me know I'm buckled, thank you very much, and we're good to go. So, inching away, we'll talk about the low speed stuff here, may as well. So, one pedal driving is really, 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 really good in this car. When I tip into the throttle, it's a pretty soft start, and then when I lift off the accelerator pedal, look at this, just inches down to a stop. It's so smooth, really cool, and uh, an amazing, uh, amazing calibration of low speed driving. You feel no motor cogging. You never feel the friction brakes kind of grab like you do in Mach-E. And I honestly think this is the smoothest one pedal drive I've ever experienced, at least here at high state of charge. It does kind of regen a bit hard if you snap off the throttle at above 10 kilometers an hour or so, but at low speed inching forward and back, nothing comes close to this, not even Tesla to be honest. It's really an impressive system. And part of this is because they use two permanent magnet motors. Permanent magnet motors can have more control over low speed regen than induction motors because they're always excited more or less. An induction motor you have to run current through to to uh, induce it to move forward or back or regen one way or the other. And here there's just way more control over the motors. So it shows, but it's still better than almost any other permanent magnet system I've driven. And then it, yep, you can feel it just, just the slightly uh, grab the friction brakes at the end. In terms of the braking system, the brake pedals brake by wire, which I think is the correct approach for a lot of EV uh, solutions that want to do a blended braking system. And the brake by wire uh, here is really amazing. It's definitely the same system they've used on other CMA platforms, but it's a really firm pedal. It gives great feedback. It's very easy to modulate. And I've driven the car with one pedal driving off to kind of feel more of this friction point because it is very strong regen off throttle, almost maxing it out in most cases. And I have to say it was really, really, really impressive. And that's what we'll do to start. So I'm going to accelerate up to speed, 400 horsepower. This thing rips, no question. And then I'm just gonna ease on the brake pedal. Really amazing, strong brakes. You can see the hazards came on. This won't do it in the US, I don't think. I got stuff flying around in the back. Uh, but I have to say that the brake pedal just feels better than almost any brake by wire. I mean, this is truly one of the best. In terms of emergency stopping, this is always an important point and very hard to tune as well because you wanna give the driver good feedback that ABS is kicking in and this car does actually uh, vibrate the brake pedal in ABS. So what I'm gonna do, no one's really around, stand on the brake pedal in three, two, one. And it just yanks the seatbelt. 
the pedal goes, I can hear it clicking away, and it's really, really, really good calibration. So gotta love that. I think it does a great job of slowing down. Also, Volvo's always about safety, right? So they wanna give you the most confidence in an emergency situation, and I would say this car does that. So there's your braking and accelerating stuff. You guys know I always go nerdy into that, but I think it's really important for an EV because this can all be very differently. I understand it can be a little boring. Um, in terms of power, so we have the 75 kilowatt hour usable battery pack. It's a 400 volt system. I don't know nominal voltage. I think it's not that high of a voltage pack, but we'll have to play around with it. Um, I could be wrong. I really don't remember, to be honest. And um, yeah, Polestar, when we did our charging test, I think we were down to 350 dead. So I don't think it's a very high voltage one. And we'll kind of slow down a little bit here, get through the intersection and then punch it. Ready? <laughs> Everything that we just shot forward from the braking is now to the back and really good acceleration here for sure. I mean, you don't need any more. This thing is quicker than you would expect it to be and, and I think it's probably the fastest Volvo. It's not technically the most powerful. Their new plug-in hybrids are 450 horsepower, I think, combined. Um, but I have to say, I think they did a really good job here with just the power, the calibration, the, everything drives really well and the throttle pedals calibrated nicer than earlier versions that I've driven as well. In terms of steering, you get a really uh, nice steering wheel, but it is the thick version. It's not, I, I think it's the R design wheel that you get in this car, but it's wrapped in the non-leather material, which feels great in the hands. Really an awesome one. And also you lose the, um, you lose the reflective buttons on the steering wheel, which is an amazing touch. So uh, you used to get piano black, now it's this matte plastic, and what a difference it makes. In terms of sound system, it's Harman Kardon unit, and it's not the Bowers and Wilkins, the 40 cluster cars don't get the big boy sound system, if you will, but it's more than adequate, really good system. You still have subwoofer and bass control individually. You can go through and adjust your treble as well. You can have it optimized for driver, surround, or rear. You can even turn off the rear speakers if your kids don't wanna hear you, or the other way around. So I think it's tuned really well. And and uh, great car to just put on good music and, and cruise around to, especially here in Europe. It was been pretty cool. I just kind of arrived, jumped in the car and put on some good tunes and I was having a great time instantly in the C40. It's really a pleasant car to be in, I think. Uh, in terms of the seats, they're very comfortable. They'll hold you well. The seating position is quite high. Even though this car is about six centimeters lower than XC40 Recharge, I think your eyes are at the same level. Um, so you really do feel like you're driving an SUV, but it gives you this very, I don't want to use the word sporty look on the outside, but it gives you an expressive look on the outside, I guess. I'm not a design guy. You guys know this. I don't know. I, I, I think the XC40, the boxy one's the way to go over C40. Um, for me personally, just because then you could put the dogs in there and, you know, it's the same car otherwise. This car does have some neat features that will be over-the-air software updated to XC40. For example, some of the UI improvements here. If I go to a range calculation, this car does not show estimated range on the display in front of you at all. It just says we're at 85% state of charge. And then here on the screen, it's predicting 350 kilometers if I drive how I have been driving, 390 if I drive a little bit smoother and slower, and 210 kilometers if I rip it on the highway. So this range assistant app, I think is new. I hadn't seen this before. And it does a pretty good job of predicting kind of how far you need to go, but the disparity is quite large on a full charge, of course, because that's a lot of distance that you can choose your driving style. So as you start to use the battery over 100 kilometers or so, 200 kilometers, then this gets even more accurate and you kind of hone in on how far left you can go, which is cool. Um, in terms of the range optimizer, this is a new range mode that will become an XC40 recharge as well. It just backs down some of the HVAC load. Man, this thing is quick. <laughs> Yeah, no dynamic roads, but we've driven this, or I have at least, and we've spoken about it on the Inside EVs weekly podcast, the Polestar 2 Performance, and um, yeah, this, this is the same chassis, just with the crazy Olean's dampers, and it's aggressive, so there's a large breadth of capability here for CMA architecture, and um, yeah, overall, I think that this is just much more of a comfort approach, and I honestly like it better for daily driving. First off, I like, um, yeah, I like the Volvo badge here just something cool about driving a Volvo for me personally love it and also cars just way lighter steering super comfortable and uh, yeah I, I like this version of Google 
uh, UI a little bit better than Polestar, but wouldn't stop me from going one way or another. I just think they did a really nice job on this infotainment. Let's talk about CMA really quick, Contact, Compact Modular Architecture. I know I'm dumping a ton of information at you, but I don't want it to be a half hour long video. Although you know with me, it's always gonna turn into one. Um, yeah, so CMA is designed to uh, basically hold combustion, hybrid, mild hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and battery electric. There's BMW Group's uh, offices for Belgium. There's many, uh, that must be their corporate offices for the country. And IX charging, nice. Um, they have a DC fast charger there. So, what was I saying? CMA. It's not optimized to be a battery electric chassis, but it does have battery electric capability. And it's a big battery for not being like a full ground up EV. But this still means that there's humps in the back seat where they've had to like stuff batteries around to fit in the chassis. And so I think the future of Volvo, I spoke to the guys, is to do ground up architectures. They're kind of learning with this here. Not to say it affects the ownership experience. The car is fine. Uh, and it, it's, I think, pretty pretty well packaged. But I'm just thinking in terms of uh, driving, launching it, um, you know, having a full chassis would be nice. All right, ramps up 60 kilometers an hour, gives you full power. We're already past 100K, it's gotta slow down because can't really go that fast in Europe. But we just blew everyone away. This thing is smooth, it's great. I will say though, um, because it's so smooth, when you get on the throttle, it lifts the front end up a little bit, it's a little soft, and you get some half shaft wobble. You kind of get this vibration, which I have not noticed in Polestar, and I think it's because um, this car is just so soft that, yeah, the half shafts kind of come out of their spot a little bit and vibrate. So you do get a sense that things are working hard at wide open throttle, which honestly isn't bad. I just don't know if it'll get worse over time like the Teslas do. Uh, so I guess we'll just have to keep our eye on this and, and see how the high mileage ones hold up. But it wouldn't be a concern for me. A lot of EVs shake under wide uh, wide open throttle. You can just tell they're kind of right at the edge of what their design limit is on the front axle. The rear feels super solid though, so I wouldn't really worry about it too much. Um, but definitely something you, you should drive, test drive, and see if you are okay with this little vibration. It's just a, a tiny bit. There we go, wide open throttle. By the way, great thermal management on this car. Yeah, there it actually didn't even vibrate at all. So it's just certain scenarios, I guess, when the car gets loaded up on the rear. Um, yeah, really, really awesome, awesome experience. Great thermal management, as I mentioned, you can drive this car super hard. It's not what it's intended for. It's intended to be, of course, a daily driver, a commuting device. Um, and then if you wanna go fast, you get the Polestar 2 performance, but this can still handle pretty well. I haven't taken it around any crazy corners and I don't think I'll have any to show you here in, in Belgium. It's pretty straight roads and low speed limits, uh, but at least on on-ramps and stuff, and when you get the car loaded up and you progressively roll in the throttle, it's very neutral in the way that it applies the power. If anything, it's a little understeery, um, but again, this is a Volvo. You're, it's not meant to be a shredder and it's more than good handling for your average car. It probably handles them most uh, better than most any other Volvo other than the Polestar engineered stuff. By the way, I'm sitting on pilot assist right now. So we're on adaptive cruise control. We are uh, having lane centering working for us as the newest version of pilot assist. There's a new sensor suite for this car that has a wider field of view. The radar is behind the Volvo badge in the front. The uh, camera systems up here and the uh, actual camera housing unit on the inside isn't nearly as bulky as earlier systems. It's more responsive, it's better at lane centering. And then they will also update functions to the system over time through software, which is really cool. They haven't promised any timelines or what the functions will be, but I was talking to some of the safety guys and they were saying, yeah, they can just improve and improve sort of algorithms uh, you know, at, through over the air updates, which this car will get to every module, which is really important. So. I like that quite a bit. Um, yeah, it just seems like a really well thought out package. I think the two things that I've seen comments on that are gonna be hard points for people are price and range. And you have to think of it like Volvo is a premium car company. This is a premium product. It's quiet in here. It's put together really well. You know, this is not like a um, like a Bolt TV. I mean, this is a huge step up from that. And that comes with a price. I mean, do you want to have a little bit of this Swedish design, this really nice build quality, a uh, very well thought out car? It's still 60 grand though. So that's a tough one for a lot of people, but I think, oh, I need to go to the right here. Sorry, everyone around me. Uh, thankfully there weren't really anyone around me. 
weren't wasn't really anyone around me um, I think overall it's worth the money in my opinion. The price doesn't bother me after spending time with this car and XC40 and Polestar. It's, it's definitely um, you know priced well and priced accordingly for the quality that you get. So I would say that is, yeah, a non-issue. The secondary issue a lot of people I think are gonna have a sticking point with is this 225 mile EPA range. And to be honest, I don't know how the car is gonna perform in rear wheel real world testing and this is going to be a big question mark so what we need to do is we need to do charging curve testing and range testing the volvo guys said they've optimized the battery pack to charge a little bit better now than we did our polestar test so we'll update this when this car comes to the u.s and we'll run it through our range test this should in theory be about four to six percent more aerodynamic than xc40 recharge so we'll take a look panamera sport turismo going by there Always nice to see a fast wagon around. You guys know I love those. So, um, yeah, what do you say? I mean, look, the, the, the thing is, the car's comfortable, great driver assistance, it's stylish, it's built well, makes you happy, it improves your day, which is, it at least improves my day, which is a really interesting and not scientific metric of a car. But when I get in this car, I feel happier. I'm like, oh, this is great. This is exactly what I would want to be driving. And you put on the good music and the Harman Kardon's doing well. And you know, it's a lot of glass on this car and amazing little details and touches. And it's just, everything's really well thought out. And I think I appreciate all of the effort that went into the small storage details and design elements that make this just have a little bit more of a story than your typical typical everyday car. So I really think Volvo's knocked it out of the park with this and XC40 recharge, especially considering it's built on a combustion chassis. I think the software updates are optimizing the car now better. And um, yeah, look, I think we should do a big comparison test soon. We gotta do this versus Mach-E versus uh, Model Y, but, you know, just do the whole gamut and uh, start doing some comparison testing. If you guys would like to see that, let me know. We'll start putting some programs together. And um, interesting, Q7 e-tron going by there. We don't have this car in the US. It's not fully electric. It's their plug-in hybrid Q7, which, yeah, I don't, yeah, it's not available in the US. A lot of plug-in hybrids here in Europe. Anyway, thanks so much for watching another Inside EVs video. I hope this gave you a little bit of insight as to how to expect the Volvo to drive and feel on a daily basis. I love the app, the preconditioning, the no start button, just get in, put it in gear, put it in park, walk away. It's a very well thought out package. I think from a existing automaker, Volvo's one of the more serious automakers about sustainability. And I think this is important. We're seeing uh, huge commitments to battery electric architectures coming. So I think they're just on the tail end of the engineering of their new ground up EV platforms. And then they're just gonna go bam, crazy. And they say by 2030, they'll be an all electric brand. So uh, that's not far away in the car world, by the way. 2030 is, that's eight years. We're almost at 2022. Yeah, that's insane. So they're, they're pretty much only developing um, uh, electric systems right now in-house. They said they're not even working on combustion stuff. That's kind of outsourced. Of course, the combustion cars need to get more efficient. So there are people working on those, but everyone at the core of Volvo is working on safety and sustainability with battery electric architectures. I love the commitment, love the guys there. It was really great to meet some of them here in, uh, in Belgium. And uh, yeah, I think I'm into this car for sure. But I think I'd go XC40, like I mentioned. Extra room for the dogs. Uh, too bad you can't get Fjord Blue in the XC40, only the Sage Green, which is still pretty cool. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video. I told you it wasn't gonna be 30 minutes and now it's 30 minutes. <laughs> see you, bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.